In this question, we are going to find the domain for the function f of x is equal to square root of 18 minus 6x. Domain means that we have to find the restriction on the x. And then inside of the square root, the restriction is that we cannot have any negative values inside. So therefore, in this situation, we are just going to look at the inside. And I'm going to say we need to make sure the inside expression, which is the 18 minus 6x this is all we worry about and we need to make sure that it's not negative in fact it's okay for me to have zero and i want to have this the inside to be positive therefore i will put this down as greater than or equal to zero this way i can make sure that the inside is not negative zero is actually okay and then positive number meaning greater than zero it's okay as well so this is how you're going to set up for the domain whenever you have a square root function to deal with. Just then inside, you need to make sure the inside is greater than or equal to zero. And once we have this inequality, we can continue with our usual business. Right here, let me subtract 18 on both sides so that they cancel. And then, as we can see, we will have negative 6x. And because we just subtract the 18 on both sides, right? So the inequality stays the same, greater than or equal to 0 minus 18, that's negative 18. And then we are going to divide both sides by negative 6. So that this and that will cancel. And let me put this down right here as well, divided by negative 6. And then the x will be by itself. And let's work out this first. Negative 18 divided by negative 6, that will give us positive 3. However, we divide it by a negative number. Therefore, I have to take the inequality and then switch it. Originally, it was greater than or equal to, now it becomes less than or equal to. So make sure you do the switch whenever you multiply or divide by a negative number among the inequalities like this. So this is pretty much it. X has to be less than or equal to 3. And then let me just show you a couple ways to present the answer. This is how you can present the answer in the inequality format. And I can also show you guys the graph. This right here is the same as saying I have a number line. I care about the number 3. So let me just label the streets right here. And then we are going to use a closed circle because we have the equal sign. So I'll put a closed circle on 3. x is less than or equal to 3. That means I go to the left. So it looks like this. So this is the wall. This will be the graphical way to represent the domain. And lastly, perhaps this is like the more formal way. We will write this down as an interval notation. Well, interval notation means that, uh, actually, let me just write it down for you guys right here to present our answer in interval notation. As you can see, from the graph, we have a piece of the interval, right? And we need to figure out what's the left endpoint first. But then this is going all the way to the left. So that means we will have negative infinity. Once again, because the arrow is going all the way to the left, it doesn't have a left endpoint it means we have negative infinity. And I put a comma, the right end point is 3, so I will put down the 3. And there's one more thing we have to worry about. We have to think about what to put for the negative inf infinity and the positive 3. For the infinity situation, regarding if it's negative infinity or positive infinity, we always use the open parentheses because we cannot include what infinity is really is. For the 3, as we can see from the graph, it's a solid circle, that means we want to include the number 3. Therefore, I'm going to use a square bracket, meaning we'll include the number 3. So, this right here is it. This is how we are going to present our answer in the interval notation format. Parentheses, negative infinity, comma, 3 with a bracket. That's it. Okay, what if the question is asking us to find the domain for the function g of x is equal to the cube root of 18 minus 6x? Do we still have to go through the same process for the square root earlier. Well, let's talk about it. Once again, for the square root, we are not allowed to have negative numbers inside. So let me just write it down right here. For example, if you want to take the square root of negative 64, well, too bad because we see that we have a negative numbers inside of the square root. The result is not going to be a real number. Therefore, this is not doable, right? So that's why when we have the square root, we have to make sure the inside is greater than or equal to zero. But then, could we have take the cube root of a negative number instead? Let's say cube root of negative 64. Can we do this? Yes, we can. 
the answer to this is actually just negative 4. Why? Because so B slash C says, uh, stands for because. Because when we take negative 4 times negative 4 and times one more, negative 4, we see that we take negative 4 multiplied 3 times. Negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16 times negative 4 again. That will be negative 64. And as you can see, this is exactly what's the number inside. Therefore, uh, the cube root of negative number is actually doable. So, let's go back to this. To find the domain for cube root, well, the inside can be positive number, of course. The inside can also be zero, and the inside can also be negative values. Therefore, whenever we have cube root, the inside, there is no worry. We have anything that we can use for x values inside of the cube root. Therefore, the domain, you can just say this, it's all real values for x, okay? And for the interval notation, we can write this down as it goes from negative infinity up to positive infinity. And once again, for infinities, we have to use parentheses because we cannot include um, the infinities. So if the question is asking you for the cube root, it's a conceptual question. If it's cube root, there's no worry inside. The domain is just all real values for the x. And in interval notation, it's negative infinity to positive infinity. You only do this when you have an even root, such as the square root, or maybe the fourth root, and things like that. If you have to find the domain for the odd root, like 3, 5, or the 7th, uh, or things like that, then there's no worry inside. Anyways, that's it.